Actually, Alex, we're going to continue moaning. Because, uh, <laughs> oh, no. We're going to continue moaning about NVIDIA as well, because it looks as though there's issues with 50 series and that there's mm. been deprecation of support for 32-bit CUDA, which does have an impact on a small, but I'd still say significant amount of games. And um, you did some A to B comparisons of what this means, and I'd say it's astonishing. Yeah, sorry. I'm like internally moaning about this so much right now. I'm just like, I can barely contain it. Okay, so <laughs> let me just say like, I foundationally find this a big problem. So the, the, what is happening is that 32-bit uh, CUDA is being deprecated for RTX 5000 series and then presumably for the future thereafter. And the reasons for that are probably various. Uh, probably has to do with Windows stuff. Probably has to do with internal things at nvidia as well too right mm -hmm. um but um the the knock-on effect of that is that you know physics was based on cuda it came out with the gpus that could first start running cuda and uh that means that all of the games that were built during that time period when 32-bit cuda was in existence the 32-bit version of physics uh now are no longer hardware accelerated on these GPUs, these RTX 5000 series GPUs, while they are still technically hardware accelerated on RTX 4000 and lower. And yeah, you can find that information out there. There's a good set on, uh, there's a good thread on Reset Era that goes over the listing of games. And now the reason why I find this a big problem on like a theoretical level or just like an ideational one is that PC is the platform for backwards compatibility. And it losing support on an for just an arbitrary reason uh presumably for bottom dollar reasons uh, at the end of the day i think is a massive shame and a disservice to the the platform and a disservice to the customers who buy new gpus because one of the biggest joys of ever getting a new gpu or a new set of hardware is loading up your favorite old games and seeing them fly at like ridiculous resolutions and ridiculous frame rates. That is one of the joys of getting a new GPU. And Nvidia is just really taking a dump over that legacy, taking a dump over the legacy of what PhysX was to the brand back in the day. So now the, the, the truth of the matter is that when you play a game like this, this is Arkham Asylum, which was the headliner game back in the day for physics gpu physics support when it came out added a whole lot of really cool stuff uh, including fluid uh smoke physics yep. and you can move forward in the in intro area here and this is at 4k with all things max but it's a ue3 game so you really should be expecting frame rates in the hundreds on an rtx 5080 but it's like really wobbly and if you look at the GPU uh, GPU utilization, which I've thrown in the left-hand corner here, you'll see it is nowhere near 100% the entire time. Start moving forward again, uh, get around to where the Joker is going down on this little elevator into the area where you start seeing the uh, actual like fluid, cool smoke effects that are uh, added into the game from physics. And you'll see that the frame rate tanks down to like 17 FPS. Frame times are ridiculously broken. And uh, that is the kind of experience you should expect now because effects that were designed to run purely on really large, very wide GPUs are now being run on a single CPU thread, most likely, and it, doing it very inefficiently because physics at this time was not designed around CPU uh, mm -hmm. calculations at all. And it the performance is nowhere near real time. The, the, the situation is that an RTX 5000 user is getting a worse experience playing older games than an RTX 4000 user, even though they spent maybe, I'm showing the RTX 5080 here, but you could show the exact same thing on RTX 5090. The thing that is limiting performance is now CPU, and that's why the GPU is completely underutilized if you look in the top left-hand corner here. Um, and I find this a really big problem because some of the coolest games on PC back in the day had physics support you got this one you got mirror's edge i love cryostasis that is a niche game uh oh, you yeah. know just go back mafia 2's physics were amazing and it's and, and it's just like that legacy is now gone and the only way to actually make this work now is i have footage here on the right 
of the same RTX 5080, but I've also stuffed an RTX 3060 <laughs> into the same machine uh, without anything hooked up to it other than the power. And from there, you can, uh, in the NVIDIA control panel, actually add a dedicated card, which only does PhysX calculations. And when you do that, the GPU utilization of the RTX 5080 stays at 100% the full time, and you get an amazing experience of the game running at 4K constantly above 120 FPS, fully maxed out with all these crazy physics going on. And the, the, the physics are actually amazing. You go back to this game and you see something that even modern games don't do. That's an amazing experience, I think. And that's the yeah. PC experience. And NVIDIA doesn't want that for some reason. So I am very saddened by this i heard the news alex and i was thinking to myself okay right it's been decades basically since um uh, these games came along surely cpus have actually progressed to the point where they can do a pretty good job with these effects now yep. with using the fallback and then i, <laughs> I saw, your <laughs> I saw that footage <laughs> <laughs> and it was like you know edmund blackadder hearing one of baldrick's cunning plans it's like oh god and, yeah, uh, you know that was that was really disappointing, and, it, and then I saw the right hand side part of your footage where you had indeed mm. just stuffed a thirty sixty in there. I suspect that you could put a far less capable card in. Oh, that for sure, to do exactly yeah. the same job, but at the same time, you shouldn't have to. And it's it's disappointing in another way because I guess for a long time now, we've kind of been hoping that something along the lines of PhysX would actually make a triumphant return to PC gaming. Um, because, you know, the, the effects at the time were transformative and those games are still highly regarded for those PhysX features. And fundamentally, it's just really great stuff, right? And we mm -hmm. can't have yeah. access even to the legacy stuff anymore. Man, that's, that's disappointing. But it, to be clear... It's the 32-bit games that are the problem here. So, you know, I said to you yesterday, I bet the smoke in Arkham Knight is going to be a problem. <laughs> it's not a problem because that's the 64-bit CUDA, right? Yeah, that's a game that runs on 64-bit custom version of UE3. And by that point in time, that's like 2015 or 2016? 15, excuse I Excuse me. I forget. Yeah, um, the, by that point in time, a lot of titles that would be releasing with PhysX, and there were a lot less of them mm. at that time. Yeah. Uh, we're using 64-bit because they were now targeting uh, consoles which had more than four gigabytes of RAM, right? So that's mm -hmm. pretty much the reason why. Um, I've, I've got some more to say about this, but uh, I think this is just a huge misstep from NVIDIA. I'm going to bang this drum as loud as I can to make this decision either change or or my, my nth degree goal here is that uh, it shouldn't just be cards in the future. Because now the thing is these games are going to look worse for every card in the future from now on that is sold and eventually there's not going to be any rtx 4000 series gpus anymore and you're going to have a game that either looks worse or runs way worse than it theoretically could for really no good reason mm. and i think the best way around this would be to then actually open source the resources that make it possible to make this run on any gpu at this point in time if it is so unprofitable and so unimportant that nvidia can just deprecate it why not do something good with that deprecation and give it to the community and i'm pretty sure someone could get this working in some way um you know yeah that that's kind of the way i see it this is one of the downsides of proprietary technology when anyone can just like cut off the faucet at any point they want um and there's not much the consumer can do about it and in this case uh I would really like a goodwill gesture from NVIDIA to somehow make this work in the future that isn't so pitifully bad. Like this is completely unplayable. A game like Cryostasis, which was designed around physics use actually, the entire ambiance of the game is designed around the use of physics. Um, it's even worse than what we're showing here in Arkham Asylum. Uh, so, and that's a game where an 8800 GTX could play it better than an RTX 5090. I think that speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm sad about this. Any thoughts, John? Uh, I mean, everything you said, Alex, obviously I echo and as a retro game enthusiast, um, it's extremely disappointing because even today, I think there's a lot of value in these games and being able to explore them and see them running very smoothly was awesome, especially because at the time 
uh, they probably didn't run that smoothly necessarily on a lot of people's rigs. So, right. you know, one of the draws of PC gaming is being able to revisit classics as you please and experience them with newfound performance gains. So to retreat this far back to that such a low level performance, uh, it's it's pretty shocking, I have to admit. Because uh, like Richard, I was also of the opinion like, oh, well, surely they can power through this via software on the CPU or whatever, but no, not at all. So yeah, no. big bummer. So please continue to bang mm -hmm. that drum for us. Yeah. Uh, I talked about it a couple times on the channel before I do want to make a physics retrospective video and hopefully that is sooner rather than later. And I've have some amazing interviews that I've done already for it and, um, encompassing a geophysics and NVIDIA physics. And this would be now part of the story that the legacy, you know, like John, you kind of sometimes at the end of your DF retro videos, you talk about how can you play this game mm -hmm. today? Right. And uh, in this case, it would be like, well, actually, maybe you won't be able to play this game some point in the future this way. And that is a very sad part of the story. So, yeah. or, or perhaps um, it would be like, um, well, how do you play it the best way today? Uh, well, find an old GTX card. <laughs> Or just wait for Muse <laughs> AI to generate all those physics frames. <laughs> that is it, actually. That's the, the secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We, obviously, we'd like to see something happen around that. I mean, open source would be the way forward. I guess there potentially may be some sort of open CL wrapper or, or, or something to... That's what I'd hope for. I mean, I don't know how much of this is like dependent upon NVIDIA's ecosystem, but something that would like kind of like DG Voodoo, oh, if yeah. you've ever yep. used it. Uh, basically, the ability to play glide games in Vulcan or DX11. Uh, that is kind of what I would like to see here. Even if it was a performance hit, that translation would be way lower than the cost of running it on the CPU, which is just completely untenable for actually a real time gameplay experience. So. These are all things that I'm going to keep banging that drum for. Okay, great stuff.